The Hong Kong people have been promised a democratic government in the Hong Kong Basic Law. Article 45 states that the chief executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall be selected by election or through consultation held locally and be appointed by the central people's government. The method for selecting the chief executive shall be specific in the light of the actual situation in Hong Kong Special Administrative Region and in accordance with the principle of gradual and orderly progress. The ultimate aim is the selection of the chief executive by universal suffrage upon nomination by a broadly representative nominating community in accordance with the democratic procedures. Article 68 states that the Legislative Council of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region should be constituted by election. The method for forming the Legislative Council should be specific in the light of the actual situation in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region and in accordance with the principle of gradual and orderly progress. The ultimate aim is the election of all the members of the Legislative Council by universal suffrage. Since the resumption of Chinese sovereignty in 1997, there have been three government proposals for political reform. The first one, the proposal did not go through in 2005 for 2007 and 2008 elections. The second in 2009 for the elections of 2012. The third time in 2014 for the elections of 2016 and 17. None of these efforts have realized the ultimate aims of electing the government or legislature by universal suffrage in accordance with democratic procedures. The lack of a fair and democratic political progress in Hong Kong, which currently leans heavily towards the business sector, has produced a government and legislature that feels largely unaccountable to the general public, which in turn has contributed a declining standard of living of the average Hong Kong citizen caused in no small part by an ever-widening wealth gap as evidenced by Hong Kong's high Gini index. In fact, it is the highest among first world countries. The central government of the PRC claims it has worked towards the ultimate aims of implementing universal suffrage. To this end, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress decided upon a framework for political reform on 31st August. The framework allows voters to vote for the chief executive. The framework technically allows the universal suffrage of the chief executive, but it has three major caveats. 1. Only the election committee has the power to nominate candidates. The EC is currently used to both nominate candidates and to select the chief executive. In the reform framework, the constitution Formation and constituency of the EC is unchanged. It will be composed of the four big sectors with 1,200 members, in which each sector is represented by 300 members. The sectors are the business, professional, social, and political sectors respectively. The ratio of representatives between various sectors is good and unbalanced. For example, the agricultural and fisheries sectors has 60 seats on the EC. Yet, according to the census, only about 2,000 people are working in this sector, whereas higher education has 30 seats, yet it has a much lower constituency of more than 8,000 people. Moreover, the EC is an exclusive club where only about 7% Hong Kong voters had the right to vote for or to stand for election for a seat. The exclusivity is clear and inadequate to represent the will of Hong Kong public. And it has little standing to nominate candidates on the behalf of the general population of Hong Kong. 2. Candidates qualified to stand for elections as chief executive by obtaining nominations for more than half of the EC members. This is an unreasonably high bar. In the past elections, the bar was nomination from one over eight of the EC members. The MPCSC decided that there ought to be two to three qualified candidates, which implies that EC members are allowed to nominate more than one candidate. 
This would unavoidably lead to a sham election where Hong Kong voters are offered a false choice between candidates that are already approved it by the EC. Even though there is more than one candidate, the candidates that are approved it by the same EC are likely to implement very similar policy if elected. To illustrate the absurdity of the situation, the EC would technically nominate three candidates of the same political affiliation, and despite losing the election, the unelected candidates would end up working in the cabinet of the newly elected chief executive. 3. The government congratulates itself by acclaiming this framework as a big step forward in the development of Hong Kong. However, the nomination committee can be selected two to three candidates since the first election of the chief executive in 1997. It had been allowing a person to be nominated as a candidate as long as he can receive one of eight of the total votes from the committee. And this would allow a maximum of eight candidates for each election. However, the new reform of elections has greatly reduced the possible candidate options, down to a maximum of three. Isn't this a resection instead of improvement? Therefore, the college organizations have got a spread among the colleges from the 22nd of September. And the high school students has also joined the strike on the 26th of September. The purpose of the strike is to pursue the government for a response to the demand of the true universal suffrage for Hong Kong. However, Hong Kong government has ignored the strike and considered it as an ordinary assembly. Due to the ignorance from the government, during the night of the 26th of September, students teamed up with presidents of Hong Kong had raid to Seafood Square, which used to be an open space and belonged to the residents. During the movement, Hong Kong police force had used pepper spray and baton to combat. Students and reporters were hit by the pepper spray, and one ATV reporter was trotted by the police to stop the live report. During the standoff, one student suffered a minor heart attack. But the police refused the ambulance as a security measure. As conditions settled, police had arrested seven students, including one of the student leaders, and accusing them of assaulting police officers. As the news spread around the city, residents were enraged by the excessive force used against the students. Residents around the city voluntarily gathered and encircled the police barricade to ensure the safety of the students. Since the first day of the protest, police departments have tried to clear the protest with strong force and weapons, which include anti riot teams, batons, and tear gases. During the process, even the rubber bullets were wounded to be used against the peaceful protesters. As contrast to police heavily geared weapons, Residents' protective gears were like baby toys. Umbrella were used as shield against attacks. Goggles and foot wrap were used as eye protection from pepper sprays. In 
a press conference by the police department. The residents' protective gears were identified as high-damage offensive weapons, and police must use comprehensive force to stop the riot. Outside of China, people around the world have accused the Hong Kong government of using the excessive force against the protesters, and countries have urged the Hong Kong government to stop such violent action. The peaceful protest has been well praised by the world as umbrella revolution. And show up on many major newspapers' headlines, such as Times. However, the Hong Kong Police Department and Government Executive Office have a press conference and use decorative language to cover their atrocities and accuse the protest was an illegal and unordinary action. And the usage of protest isn't an ordinary way to present their view. On the 2nd of October, the chief executive of Hong Kong appeared and said we discussed the situation with the students. The representative, Carrie Lam Chen Yu Oh, held a meeting with students, but did not address anything regarding the demands from the protesters. On third, groups of gangsters who believed to have close relationships with the Communist Party in Hong Kong were deployed in the street where it is occupied by the protesters.